Good afternoon, YouTube. It is a very cloudy, somewhat sleety, if that's a word, drizzly kind of day. And we're back at the crappie spot, and we're going back upstream, of course. Now, one of these days, I am going to fish back down here at the bridge just to see, just to see. But you get kind of spoiled when you've been catching them in another spot, and they're consistently bigger. So, anyway, we got about two hours, maybe two and a half. If we're lucky, Creek Fishing Adventures might join us for a few minutes. So let's get to fishing. All right. Technique we're going to be using today is a technique that I've been using for years for crappie, bluegill, bass, and it's really not been catching on heavily for until the last couple of years because of you know live scope, forward facing sonar, stuff like that. And this is a very, very deadly technique for crappie. You can do it from the bank, you can do it from you know, boat, kayak, pier, whatever. But Essentially what we're doing is we're taking any little pintail a type of bait. It could be a mini fluke, a bobby garland, a panfish assassin, anything that's shad shaped per se. Chucking it out there, letting it fall. And like I've been doing in my videos, chucking it out there, letting it fall, and giving it a real steady, slow retrieval. Well, you can do it as fast or as slow as you like, and giving it a twitch the entire way get my line untangled here I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about but checking it out or checking it out there letting it fall and just a steady retrieve and twitching anything with a super thin tail kind of like Bobby Garland's or the mule fishing 2.2 or 3.2 minnow or the bonehead uh, bonehead tackle jigs I forget what they call to be honest with you but any pin tail style bait similar to that will work just fine heck you could even do it with a swim bait so let's see what all we can catch all right make sure our drag's good let's catch us some slabs some beggings or really anything Fish. What you got here? Huh? Telling y'all, one of these days, Bassmaster's Elite Series, I'm telling you. Oh, both up. Sorry. And, dude. You came back. You wanted seconds. Another fish. Wasn't real sure about that one. Thought I was running into a snag. But no. It was Mr. Crappie. And funny enough, I'm using Mr. Crappie line on this here reel. Can I have that back? Open your mouth, goober. There you go. Pretty. Right pretty fish right there. I'm telling you. Skidooshy. Another fish. That one was a little bit farther over. And a little bit deeper. Hey, 
I did not expect to catch you. Mr. Yellow Perch, you're going to open your stinking mouth. I have some pretty, pretty fish, especially when they get their fins up like that. I would almost keep you, but you're a little bit small to bother with filleting. And I'm not entirely sure what the size limit is on perching, Tennessee. I should know, but I don't. So I'm going to look real quick. Hmm, I could have kept that one. There is no minimum length, size, and all that in Tennessee. And that one was still a little bit too small to bother with. Another fish. This is a nice fish. What it is. Use a crappie. A crappie that is <coughs> this maced me with creek water. And something took a bite at you or something. Oh, what's going on there? Tank Nary got an idea. Skadushi. That crappie did sling water in my eyeball. My eyeball hole. That's nice. And you get a little bit muddy, but be all right. All right, squirrel. You want the spunkiest bass I've caught in a minute. You get spunky little dude. Y'all feel really good. Like that right there, in my opinion, you know, those 8 to 12 inch bass. Oh, sorry. Those 8 to 12 inch bass just are, I think, the perfect size for ultralight fish. They put up enough fight. They, they're small enough that you can control them relatively easily. And, you know, on these light and ultralight rods like this, this is a 6.6 TFO light, by the way. They feel good on rods like this. What's happening? I'm hoping to take some home, but they ain't cooperating today. There we go, we got some fishy. Going in the right direction with them now. It's a little bit bigger than the last one that we caught. And right there is old Creek Fishing Adventures. So, ooh, a little bit of a belly flop. I apologize, good sir. You know what? I looked at my slime rags when I left the house. And I left them at the house. Oh well. Fish. I don't particularly care for how that line sounds coming through the guide up there on the end, but something bit you. Yeah, it's just on that one side but then again it could be just dirt or something like that in the guide but that's another pretty little black crappie i took and put some super glue some gel super glue in that very end eye so that it can kind of sit and form 
in all those tiny little grooves, which it's helped. You would think that it would kind of fray your line or something like that, but as it, you know, molds over that, it rounds off, but. Well, how many did you end up catching? I was thinking about something the other day, and I'm going to do it regardless. Uh, that's a good place for that right there, too. Yeah, this would be perfect for catching cook on us. I was going to say, I've got my old man's deer cart, and I've got a new burner thing and all that stuff. Well, you just pull that stuff down here and put it up over there and do a catch and cook on the bank. Give me a trout magazine. Um, yeah. yeah. I came I come here uh, yesterday. Is that your double jig rig right there? No, it was already here. No. Oh. There's some, uh, some stuff in that, and then there's a box with trout magnets and stuff in it in the bottom of the main pouch. Um, yesterday, at the, uh, off the bank over there on my truck trip. What are you? I don't feel like a crappie because it's all over the place. That is a snagged gizzard shad. Goodness. You. That is a. <laughs> well, that's uh, how of gizzard shad fights. You're going in the little bucket over here. Maybe. Yeah. I could just catch and cook a big old gizzard shad. <laughs> That uh, catfish and carp guy did one on Gizzard Chad several years ago and uh, said they taste kind of muddy. Yeah, I, oh, the heck was that? Oh, wow. the heck is that? I got us a minnow. An actual minnow. <laughs> Are you serious? That is an actual minnow. That's the first I've actually snagged or caught a minnow. <laughs> now, if we could do that about 48 more times, we're at Appalachia, and I went probably halfway to the bridge and turned around and said, screw it. And uh, I only caught like two rainbow. Little bass. Kill. See, bass like that on, you know, like ultralights and lights just feel so freaking fun. Yeah, yep. <laughs> That's the same thing. He's got a large mouth. I got a large mouth. We're both fishing. Well, I don't, yours is lighter at ultralight. Light, right. Same thing. We're twinning. But first, let me take a selfie. Well, y'all, it's definitely been a lot colder in the last day or two. And the fish are just really slow today. They're just not biting today like they have been. Anyway, we're going to pick this up on another day. But I'm going to at least get home and get this portion of the video edited and ready for the next couple of clips. So we'll be back up here in a couple of days and see what we can make of it then. All right, y'all. Different day, different creek. And we're down here on this one here for whatever reason like i hardly ever fish it anymore just because every time i come down here i catch jack squat except for the 40 dollar challenge thing i did a couple videos ago but we're gonna get down here and try to give it about an hour and a half and see what we can catch because uh it's windy and it's very cold so yeah we're gonna see if we can give it an hour and a half Fish? Yes. Fish. Le fishy. On the custom swim bait. Looks like a pretty good fish too. Little bass fish. You're just barely hooked, too. That thing's got red lips, so it's sitting down there on the bottom, feeding on crawls and stuff. 
These are made um, with Epic bait molds. I think they're called the Epic Spuds. And I thoroughly, thoroughly wish that I had brought my electric hand warmer and some gloves because if it wasn't for the wind, <laughs> you know that old saying, if it wasn't for the wind, it wouldn't be too bad. All right, I'm not gonna lie, between that wind and the cold temperature and not catching anything besides the one little bass, I wimped out. So uh, we're going somewhere else. That's a fish. That's a good fish too. Well, I mean, kind of, sort of. Compared to what we usually catch out of this creek, chill out. Pretty black crappie, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, black crappie. Get a picture real quick. Yeah, this technique is very, very deadly for finesse crappie fishing, and I have somehow hooked myself. There we go. This technique is really deadly for, well, you can do it off a boat. You can do it from, you know, a pier or whatever you feel or whatever you're fishing from, and you can use just about any bait, you know, pintail baits like I was talking about. You can twitch it and reel it low, mid, high, whatever you gotta do. But it is a prime technique for this time of year when the fish have got really lethargic and just don't want to move. You know, you can twitch it, move it as fast as you want, slow as you want. There's really no wrong way. I like to keep the, the reel speed about like that and just barely twitch it which the colder the water is the stiffer the plastic is going to be so it's not going to move as much so i mean there's no real way of knowing exactly how much you're getting out of that bait but if it's something that's fairly soft kind of like bobby garland's or mule minnows from mule fishing supply company link in the top of the description check it out it's my affiliate link that's going to move very very easily got a fish <laughs> that was uh, very very unexpected chill out homeboy it's a little large mouth chill I drug it over a snag down there and went to pop it loose and when it did I guess that got the attention of this rather rather rotund little dude like he's short but he's He's got some chunk to him, so. Oh, oh slight belly flop. But I guess that little twitch got the attention of him as soon as it came off of that snag. Oh. <laughs> that is not a real big crappie, but that thing hit it with some authority. Pretty little crappy. Skadoosh. Fishing's been pretty dang slow, which then again, it is like 40 degrees with like a 10 mile per hour wind today. So, dish or the dish. The fish are definitely a lot more lethargic, which is why I use that technique, hover strolling. Pretty much any time of the year. Spring, summer, fall. Well, definitely fall and winter. Another fishy. There we go. Another little chunk. You got a little scar on you. But we're going to give it just a few more minutes because... One, flip, flip, I'm sorry. One, 
my hands okay you could tell they kind of red from being cold and all that and two i'm cold <laughs> one and two i'm cold but like i said you can fish this technique you know high stick your rod midway down low whatever you're doing i recommend doing it with like a, a high angle if you're going to be fishing it over a lot of cover that way you, it's a lot easier to keep your bait on top of the cover instead of down in it or comfortable or whatever whatever angle is comfortable enough for you there's another one oh i tell you what this one's got some pretty colors on it This one, chill, oh, man. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. That is a gorgeous little bass right there. Usually, this time of year, they've got, you know, pretty, um, oh, no, it's off. I'm sorry. Pretty pale colors. But the last couple have been actually pretty vibrant. Oh, that's definitely a nicer one. Crap eye. Nice little add to the day. And how in the world do I have you hooked? There we go. That one almost looks like a white crappie, but it's got just a, a weird kind of white green hue to it Whew, dang it y'all it is friggin cold like i had to put my hoodie in four-wheel drive for a little bit there but i'm gonna be putting my rechargeable hand warmers in my bag from here on out but anyway hover strolling for crappie it is very very deadly on these things it works i mean it's you can go back and look at any video i've posted in the last two years and see how effective it is because that's pretty much what i've been doing for the last two years of doing youtube is that particular technique and it apparently just recently i guess recently got the name hover strolling but anyway i'll link a couple of videos in the description so y'all go check them out in a more detailed and more educated manner because i'm just a dude that's fishing <laughs> anyway i'm freezing hungry thirsty hope you liked the video thanks for watching